You're in the locker room with Lachlan Cross, Grant Johnson, and James White. 95.7 Cruise FM. Calling a guy by the name of Ryan Lindley. He's a big food guy. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, pal. How are you? Good, good. Um, Linz works with the Dean Blundell Podcast Network. Have they given you some sort of directorship? <laughs> uh, director of Food and Beverage, I believe. <laughs> there we go. That's anyway, a good one to have. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and I swear to God, I am not making this up, Linz. Yesterday, we started talking about the Tim Hortons pizza, which we talked about on the show yesterday as well. Yeah. It's being um, tested in Toronto right now. I tweeted about that after I found out about it, uh, whining that they weren't doing it in Edmonton. Why yeah. does Toronto get the cool stuff always? We started talking about it on the podcast yesterday. Linz does a story just carving it, shitting all over the pizza. Shitting all over Tim Hortons, taking yep. a big dump on the new offering. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, there we go. And his title is, can someone do a wellness check on Tim Hortons, please? And he's got Dave Chappelle ah. trying to put cocaine in his nose uh, right on the front of it. It's like, but hang and, on, and just hang carved on. it. Carved it, dude. Carved Hold it. Hold on. Yep. Absolutely. When's the, the last, last time you've gone to Tim Hortons? Listen, can I read you what he said? Let me read you what, what Lynn's put in this article before we before we go any further. And because you and I are on the same page. Let's give I, these I guys was there a this chance. morning, Lock, just so you know. Okay. Oh. I for one, Lynn says, food guy, cannot wait for a piece of Dempster's bread slathered soggingly in ketchup, then topped with thin slices of hot dog and processed cheese. They can't toast a fucking bagel, but we're going to allow them to make a hack at pizza. If you find one of your friends or family members consuming pizza in Toronto to Tim Hortons, you can probably have them formed and watched for 72 hours, put in psychiatric hold. That's what he's saying. He's saying if you get this pizza, you deserve to go go into a mental institution. Well, you, you should, it's cause for concern. I'm not done reading your shit piece. Hit piece, shit piece. And I swear to all that is holy. If you order a pizza in the drive-thru just in front of me, trying to get a mediocre coffee on my way to work, you and I will be on the six o'clock news. Ouch, Linz. Ouch. Oh, there's, Ouch. There's my plans for next week. I'm driving to Ontario. <laughs> I'm going to follow your ass around. And you, without even testing it or tasting this, have already decided that it's it's going to be awful. Right, that's correct. Which you're judging a book by its cover. Yeah, uh, and you're... I'm judging. I'm judging a book by its historical uh, <laughs> abilities and by its cover. Yeah. Okay, so um, you are a bit of a food snob. We've established that since I've known you, but it's good to bring that up in this conversation. Yeah, people don't know that for some correct. odd reason. That Tim Hortons pizza conversation worked its way into a conversation about beer butt chicken. And I don't know why you went there, but I swear to God, Linz, I swear to God, I got off the podcast and I went upstairs and my wife turned to me and said, you need to go downstairs, grab a beer, drink half of it. <laughs> Which so, is an awesome <laughs> thing for your wife to say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because we're having beer butt chicken tonight. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Was she watching the show? I can guarantee. No! I can guarantee Locke's wife does not watch the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was that beer butt chicken thing, and there was also the hodgepodge thing. It was just, it was a weird day of coincidence. Anyway, you started crapping all over beer butt chicken. Why? Very, very unpopular opinion, but it's, uh, it's based in science. Beer butt chicken is a roasted chicken, and that's all it is. And what it's done is you vertically roasted a chicken, which is fine. And I'm not saying that they taste bad. I'm just saying that you're wasting a can of beer on doing it. And if anything, you're taking away the opportunity to make chicken better. I've always wondered if, if, if the can of beer is actually doing anything. I think it does. It, it, it absolutely does. It helps stand up the chicken. <laughs> it, but you're boiling the beer and the, the vapors are going into the chicken. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, Jimmy, what, at what temperature does water boil? Let's do some science here on the show this morning. What temperature does water boil? This isn't going to end well. 100 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Right, so that's 212 degrees Fahrenheit, because we cook in Fahrenheit even though we're on the metric here, okay? So 212 degrees. What is the internal temperature of a finished cooked chicken? I, I have no, no idea. Say 
food handling temperature says 165 degrees. Okay. At what point? At what point did we boil the chicken, Jimmy? Or sorry, did we boil the uh, the beer? 60 degrees before that. But it. No, no, that's when. The, oh God, this. No, is he's in Fahrenheit. Lins, Lins, oh, he 165 said Fahrenheit. is in Lins, Fahrenheit. This is your fault. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. He gets all so turned I think, around. I think what he's saying is that if the beer you cook, never boils. If you cook a chicken on a barbecue, you never actually boil the beer. What if you're like me and everything's at 400 or 500 <laughs> uh, Fahrenheit on the barbecue? The inside. That what happens again with a bit of thermal dynamic. Uh, whatever touches the inside of that bird becomes <laughs> part of the thermal mass. Okay, so yeah. the inside of the bird is now the same temperature, eventually will even out to be the same temperature of the can of beer. So you're taking a cold beer and you're putting it inside of a cold chicken. And now you're going to bring that temperature up together. And what you're doing is you're removing the opportunity for any sort of heat to get in and cook the inside of that chicken, dry it out, get rid of some of the moisture, the surface moisture to seal in the internal moisture. All you're doing is cooking against it and you're not you're not letting it you know how you get that nice browning of the skin on the outside? It's called the Maillard reaction when it comes to protein. And what, what it does, peptide bonds inside of the chicken skin break down, and it, they become brown. They, they release, you, you hear this all the time, you know, oh, uh, replenish your peptide bonds in your skin, you know, like when you hear... Yeah, what, I hear that every day. When you, well, I'm talking about on commercials and, sh- and, and, and stuff for, for skin creams. So what you want to do is you want to remove moisture from the skin of a chicken or the inside, the internal parts of a chicken, seal it off, and then that way the meat, the actual meat that you eat, that's the one that keeps the moisture in. Again, you're not you're not harming it. It's not bad inherently. All you're doing is roasting a chicken, but you're also blocking up a, a source of for the heat to get in there. There's way better ways to cook a chicken, especially on a barbecue, than shoving a can of beer up, uh, up its ass. It's cool, though. It's fun. It's, neat. Oh, it looks cool. it. it's very theatric. It's a it's a very it's a cult like theatrical cooking method, and that's all it is. And it sounds cool. It looks neat. You get to drink a half a can of beer. Why not drink the whole beer and enjoy a good chicken? Where did Colonel Sanders hurt you? <laughs> I don't want to talk about Popeye. <laughs> is this a, a well-known fact in the cooking world? So, b- yeah. pe- so people in the barbecue world would think that we're all being complete jackasses for for trying to cook a chicken with a beer can in its no, uh, and like I say, it's not it's not a bad thing, and it's not like it's like you're making a terrible chicken. It's still going to taste delicious, of yeah, course. I love beer butt chicken. Better ways to do it, and there's better ways to cook it where you can get more flavor out of a chicken than wasting a can of beer on it. Okay. So, yeah, in in barbecue, it's it's you know it's fifty fifty. It's like whatever you know. Some people like it for for the for the theater, and some people just you know they they just know the science behind it. Show me a Michelin star restaurant that serves roasted chicken with a beer can in it. All right, there are articles backing them up as well. By the way, is there? Yeah, okay. I was looking. Oh, I'm still doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. It's the only time I, I feel like say. a chef. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I give a quick tip? Yeah, spatchcock. Everybody, look up the word spatchcock and don't Should leave on my work computer. Should we do? Yeah, doing you can that? do it on your work computer. It's work safe. And what it is, it's a, it's a it's a method of actually cooking a chicken properly. And all you got to do is get yourself a, get a set of good chicken or uh, kitchen scissors. Cut the spine out of that bird. Crack it in half. Season it, and it cooks evenly and quickly on your barbecue, and it tastes a hell of a lot better than a beer can chicken. What is that again? Spatchcock. Oh, spatchcock. Spatchcock. Okay, excellent. I'm, I'm loving that word. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Linz. Okay, boys, have a good morning. We'll be spatchcocking it up.